Welcome. Hello, everyone. My name is Benita Daimley Ross, and I will be the host for this TLC session. We are excited that you have joined us today for Embracing Embodied Learning as a Facilitation Technique in an Online Classroom. Please welcome Beth Posca. Take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Bonita. So before I get going, I have two little housekeeping notes that I want to make. Uh, the first one is Bonita is going to leave the chat box running for our session. Um, I will do my best to watch that while we're watching the time and staying within uh, this 30 minutes we've got. So feel free, to, feel free to type a question. If I don't catch it as we're going, we'll review it back at the end during the Q&A session. So uh, feel free to use that um, so you don't lose a question as we're going. Uh, the second housekeeping note is if you would grab a scrap piece of paper, um, anything works. I got just a little teeny tiny little notepad here, which is plenty of space for most of us. Um, so grab that, keep that handy, keep a piece of, or a pencil handy, piece of pencil, that would work too. Um, and we will use them throughout this uh, presentation. So before we start, um, I want to take uh, just a quick poll to assess your familiarization with embodied learning. I wanna do this to help familiarize, to see how familiar you are, and to kind of get an idea of how in depth we explain some of these topics. So that's on the screen now. A Couple of you have come in, not at all, that's okay, somewhat. Somewhat's growing, good job, thank you. <laughs> Keep it going. There's no right or wrong in here. Um, really, this is to help me determine um, how in-depth we go into some of the topics. Um, you're here, so that obviously gives me some indication that you're at least interested in embodied learning, whether you've heard of it or not. Um, so this is a great, a great start to know where we're going. All right, five more seconds. All right, so this gives me what I wanted to know, that nobody here is very familiar, nobody's already using it, so um, that's just fine. Uh, I am looking forward to explaining this to you and giving you guys um, some ideas and hearing some of your tips and ideas of how to use this technique in your online classrooms. So I'll first start off giving you a little bit um, of information about myself. So I have been facilitating in online classrooms for almost 13 years now. Um, I have really truly loved incorporating my passion and my interests in public relations and marketing and bringing that to students, especially adult students, and helping them meet their goals in their education and their professional paths. So part of my journey is the last two years I've been working on my second master's degree in adult education and training, um, which has really helped me narrow in and focus in on a lot of the theories that are out there about adult education. Last year, I had the opportunity, or last semester, I should say, I had the opportunity to pick embodied learning as a theory to look into and study more um, in depth as part of one of my classes. That idea of embodied learning connected with me because for about the last 12 years, I've been practicing yoga, and that's really been an important part of my life. I started doing it just for the physical benefits. I'd sit at a computer all day at my job, I'd come home, I'd teach online, a lot of sitting, I think a lot of us feel that, recognize that. So yoga started as a way for me to work through my physical body, but as I grew into feeling my physical body, I learned more and more about the mental side of yoga. And that's really where embodiment and the idea of connecting the mind and the body come together for this presentation with embodied learning. So here's a quick little overview about what we're gonna cover today. So first we'll start with what is embodied learning, and then we'll go into two of the different parts of it with intuition and emotion. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the challenges in online learning. And then I really wanna make this possible for you all to go and implement right now in your own classrooms. Um, so we'll talk about some ideas of how to uh, make embodied learning work in your classrooms. So I wanna start with just a little bit of audience participation here. Uh, grab your piece of paper. Uh, this is where it starts to come into play. We'll use it a couple more times um, in the next couple minutes. So as you are sitting here, we're gonna try for 60 seconds just to sit and think. 
focus on just these 60 seconds. We all bring a lot into this presentation, whatever's happened earlier in the day, whatever you're thinking about you have to do after these 30 minutes, um, just try to focus on these 60 seconds. If it helps to look at the image of breathing in, breathing out, that's a resource that you can use. So just try it. Okay, that's about 60 seconds. Believe me, it felt like an eternity from this side, sitting here being quiet, but I know my whole point of being here is to talk to you. But experiencing those 60 seconds, now take that piece of paper and just try to write down one or two words that talk about your feelings, how you felt in those 60 seconds. Again, there's no right, there's no wrong, something I stress in any type of embodiment or experiencing your feelings. Whatever you felt is what's right for you. So write those words down, keep them close. We'll return to them throughout the presentation. So let's jump into the meat of our presentation today. What is embodied learning? Embodied learning is the idea of taking into account the mind, the body, and the heart into our learning and understanding what we feel as we're learning something. One of the assumptions in the research published about embodied learning is that every individual is capable of growth and development, especially when we're connecting the mind, the body, and the heart all together. We must make each we must make a conscious decision to do this and to explore these connections to make them work and allow them to evolve with our learning. The image here presents uh, the connection and all the different pieces that come into embodied learning. First is the mind, where we generally connect with our students in the classrooms. This is where our rational or cognitive learning or knowledge come into place. Second is the heart. Uh, this is where our emotions or what we think about something comes from. And finally, the third part is our physical body sensation. Sometimes we have meaning and connection to how our physical body feels. And when we start to address that in combination with the heart and the mind, we can put meaning behind those feelings. So this graph does include in the center the idea of the spirit. I really don't want to discount that as part of embodied learning, but for the limited scope of today's presentation, um, I really want to just focus in on the mind, the body, and the heart and establish kind of how they're all connected, especially with feelings and intuition. So here comes our second poll. Here we go. Uh, now that you have just a general idea of what embodiment is, I want to get kind of a temperature of what is going through your mind right now. Uh, that was the first poll, Bonita. So if there's a second one, let's see if there's, there you go, awesome. So after just the last couple minutes of a very basic idea and definition of embodied learning, what is your initial feeling about embodied learning? Okay, good split. <laughs> Willing to listen. Good. You're all here, so I would hope that nobody is in the pretty far out there, not for me. You all made the decision to come, so that's good to see that nobody has just gone away. Well, maybe you did already go away and you're just not in this poll, but that's okay. Okay, so that gives me a good idea. Nobody is saying it's not there and you're just going to throw some criticism at me in the Q&A, so I'm good with this. Um, so we're all willing to listen. We all want to try and see how we can use this, maybe in our own lives, but also in um, our classroom and facilitation. So thank you for doing that poll and giving us an idea of where you're at. 
So what is embodied learning? A little bit more. Um, there's a quote on the screen, and I pulled up that image again to keep the frame of reference in mind of overall what is encompassing in uh, embodied learning. Our goal with embodied learning is to understand what each part of our body means and then find the connection to what we are learning. Overall, embodied learning works to develop the cognitive thinking by exploring our non-cognitive feelings and understanding of a topic. Embodied learning considers each of these three elements of a person as a whole, rather than looking at each one of them individually. One way that we realize and see embodied learning in, one way that we see embodied learning is through intuition. So intuition is the outside ring that uh, possibly connects all three of these areas. Have you ever just had a feeling about something or you aren't really sure why you're doing something, but you just have that strong calling? This is often intuition. And when our body, mind, and heart pull together to put the different pieces of information together to tell us something, even if we don't quite understand what that meaning is, there's a message there. We have a couple of choices of what we do with that message. We can ignore it and just move on doing what we normally would have done. Or we can pay attention and actually do what our intuition is telling us to do. Third, the third option is that we can pay attention to that intuition and take it a step further and try to understand why that meaning is there. At the beginning of the presentation, I started sharing with you some of my experiences in the context of online facilitation. I did this because I felt it was important to share with you that after 13 years of teaching online, my heart, my mind, and my body have built insights into what I do and how I do it. For example, I know that I love teaching online and I love working with adults. My intuition has pulled me into developing my profession and developing my path into continuing to do this. One example of intuition is telling me that we should keep presentations short. Uh, I, I know that I like just short presentations. I know that my body starts to hurt if I sit too long, um, but I can also start to rationalize it. Uh, for example, Dr. Borden, the keynote speaker yesterday for TLC, I heard him a couple months ago in another uh, presentation. And he talked about the cognitive science that we lose our attention span in a, a, as little as six minutes. Um, so that kind of starts to rationalize this intuition and this feeling about keeping presentations short. Honestly, my gut just tells me that I'm going to follow it. So maybe your intuition is telling you what I'm about to do right now. We've got another challenge to kind of bring you into uh, this presentation a little bit more. I think almost everybody's cameras are turned off, so I'm not going to be able to see you, but that's okay. I trust that you'll give this a try. Um, so even though we're just sitting here, um, just try to find some movements in your body. There's some pictures on the screen that give you some ideas. I'll give you some verbal cues. You can watch me, but this is again, just probably 60 seconds. Just find some movement in your body that you wouldn't normally do just sitting here and listening to a presentation. So if you're like me, I hold a lot of stress in my neck, my shoulders. So just start to release that. Maybe tipping your head to the side. And then tipping the other ear to the other side. If you want to make grand movements, standing up, jumping up and down, touching your toes, and that's okay in your environment, go for it. The great thing about online learning, especially turning off these videos, is that you do kind of have your own privacy and have that space to work how your body and how you want to do it without anybody else looking at you. So keep finding those movements, just a few more. And then grab your piece of paper as you start to settle back into your chair normally and write down a couple of words again about how you feel. Last time it was thinking about the emotions and the feelings. This time, hopefully, think about how your body feels. So we each have different areas in our lives that we've built experience and we trust that intuition. Intuition isn't always right, but that's part of the process of building knowledge on our next gut, gut feeling or idea. The more we pay attention to and maybe even the more we, we reflect on a gut feeling, 
the more accurate and helpful intuition can become in our lives. Intuition can't be forced, but we can build on it by exploring where it comes from within our body as a whole. Recognizing and reflecting on intuition about a specific class topic related to our own experiences, either in a class or with that subject in our personal lives, can help us as instructors or as students start to focus on what our minds, hearts, and bodies are telling us. One piece of our image here is the heart, which draws the idea of feelings as a part of who we are. Your gut feeling may be to skip this idea of feelings if there's a challenge to understanding your own emotions. But the more we do explore, the more we can learn. What makes learning happen through embodiment is combining these physical feelings of our body and the rational logic of our mind with the feelings of our heart. So I admit, it's often not part of a course objective to look for what the students think about a certain subject or what their feelings are. Rather, we're usually working towards creating or improving some type of understanding and knowledge about our topics. Understanding our feelings about topics can help contribute to these cognitive skills of understanding and knowledge about any subject. Just like intuition, emotions can't be forced, but we can purposefully explore the emotions and try to understand them. Embodiment is often used in topics that are physically driven, like dancing or sports, or even something like the physical movements of learning to be a surgeon. Even in these dri skills driven by knowledge, understanding our feelings, the way our body feels, the way what our mind is telling us, can make those connections stronger for learning a practice or idea. Exploring feelings or emotions doesn't have to be as in-depth as sitting on a counselor's couch and working through every little detail of our lives, but rather we can start it in our class environments simply with a question or two to students about what do you feel about this? Maybe even something as simple as a thumbs up on those announcements gives us the idea that students are involved and that they do understand or have some type of positive connection with what we're discussing. So I can't present this topic without saying that there is skepticism about the theory among some higher education educators and in the research. There may not be scientific research about uh, the proof of embodiment or about these individual pieces, but when we think about this idea as a whole and what we do know about the body and the mind connection, bringing in the heart and the feelings is a natural path towards it. Even though we're physically separated in an online class or in our work online, the encouragement to practice embodied learning doesn't really change. I personally believe that students are in more control of whether they take the time to pause and recognize each of their feelings or what they're experiencing in their body in connection to a topic when they're online. Just like I mentioned when we were doing our movement exercise, I can't see you so I can put no type of uh, opinion or idea of whether you're doing something right or wrong. And that opens up a different aspect and a different level of opportunity for students to experience this. So throughout the presentation, I've repeated that this is about finding the connection about the mind, the body, and the heart. When all of this uh, comes together, we have to understand that the first step is to be intentional about making it happen. It might be a natural process to some who are already connected to their body or their mind through other ways or other practices. Um, maybe even in that spirit idea that I said I wasn't going to go into a lot today. Um, that can be a very strong connection for some and connecting all of that back to learning is the opportunity here. The more we practice when we aren't in a struggling situation to recognize our feelings, the more natural embodied learning can become when we are struggling and do need some type of additional help to understand our topics. So how do we use this in our online learning classrooms? Uh, my first uh, suggestion and thought is just to simply ask others. Um, I do this frequently in my announcements that I just say, how are you doing this week? If there is something I can do to help you or help you understand, let me know. If there is confusion, if there is frustration, if there is any type of emotional word that we can put on it to help students start thinking about what they're feeling, um, I've found a great 
connection with students to help them work through those feelings. Maybe it's nothing that I can honestly do. Maybe it's just being an ear. Maybe it's just helping them understand that having an emotion and having a feeling is okay, part of the process, and to work with it instead of against it. Uh, so one other thing that I do throughout our discussions, I, I frequently use this in uh, the introduction uh, to public relations class that I teach. Very first, I ask them in the discussion is, what does your gut tell you about public relations? Uh, why do you think you have that gut feeling is the additional follow-up question I often ask. It's not part of my uh, discussion question formally, um, but it is one way that I really choose to interact with students in my discussion posts. It helps them develop their own ideas to understand where they're coming from about the topic, uh, and then we can build on that week to week as our topic develops in the class. So I want to return back to the little pieces of paper that you have right now. Um, I've put these questions in there, these activities, and the goal for you to write down your feelings um, as a practice, as a challenge for me, from me to you um, in our online environment of this presentation right now. So just take a moment, look at your words. We connected one with the feelings of your heart and your mind after just pausing and taking a break. And then we connected one with the physical feelings. So as you bring all that back together, would you write down those same words right now? We've had about 20 minutes, a little bit more maybe, of understanding embodied learning, of starting to understand our feelings. Again, I stress that there's really no right, no wrong when it comes down to feelings. Part of uh, the exercise is not just writing down the feelings, but trying to understand it. And that really is a personal process. But as online facilitators, each of us have the opportunity to encourage students to do that process on their own. And we all know that it has to start somewhere. So that is the end of the material that I have um, prepared. I, I really do hope that today we've come together and we've um, started to understand more about embodiment, about how the mind, the body, and the heart connect together to help us understand topics uh, better than just um, natural study processes. So the chat box is still going, so if you have any questions, feel free to post them there. Or I'd like to open it up, since we have a couple extra minutes, um, to just see if you guys have any ideas of how you might use this or how you have been using this and didn't even realize it in your classrooms. So feel free to type it in there. I'm going to scroll through some of my references. So during the presentation, Jennifer posted, um, that helping students connect to their feelings is normal and is a great breakthrough. I agree about that, especially in the online um, environment where we are disconnected. We may not even see the student ever. Um, I think that helping them understand that those feelings is normal and part of the learning process, but to work through them and to work with them um, is the next step of understanding and making the most of them. Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions. My contact, my email is at the bottom of this. So if you have any questions, if you wanna see any of these um, references, I can absolutely send you links within the library to them. Um, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I really am honored to present to my colleagues here at Ashford University. I really believe in that we're all part of this team and serving our students. Um, so maybe embodied learning is one way that you'll consider serving our students in the future. Thank you, everybody.